this is this is the livelihood of the citizens here. If if if, he's, if Mr. Taylor has been operating, then then he deserves it. But we, I as a member of this board, am not going to take um, you know before before I am able to uh, change from a thumbs down to a thumbs up. I would have to see more documentation. But that's all. That's all. I and I'm just going to point out it's page 22 and one is destruction, restoration, of non-conforming uses. If an industrial, commercial, or other business establishment ceases to operate for a period of 30 continuous months, and the industrial, commercial, or other business use of the property is not conform to the land use classification as denoted in the existing regulations, for the zoning district which is located after the 30 month cessation, any use proposed to be established on the site, including any existing proposed on site, sign, must conform to the provisions of the existing regulation. So, although I agree, the switch over nonprofit. Profit. Although I don't agree that it is relevant for purposes of zoning, even if it was, according to our ordinance, unless there's a 30 month lapse, it's still operational. So, um, because I to consider that. So, but he's not operating a residential facility under Sheepdog. Get people come. But he doesn't have fire. It's it's what. Now he's building cabins. It is a completely different use. Well, that's, that, that's the question I have in my mind. I believe he's not your fault. I believe he's grandfathered in. However, at, at the level he currently is in, is acceptable to me is acceptable. If this suddenly ramps up into development structures, uh, that is not grandfathered. In. That is not. That is not grandfathered. In. In. So, I agree with that. That so, is not grandfathered. So, so I, I fully expect to see Mr. Taylor in front of us sometime in the future mm -hmm. when he has those plans, especially because he's not currently sheepdog, especially because he is not a 501c3 organization. But even if he is a 501c3, if you go from campfires to cabins, if, if, if the use ramps up, I want to see him back here. Right. I think that's fair. I agree. At what level of ramp up here? Sir? At what level of ramp up here? Well, I bet. What was grandfathered in was three or four people at a time. So about three times a year. About three times a year. So so you tell me what ramp up is. You said you're going to build cabins. Well, you're getting the benefit of the doubt on having existed for that kind of activity, three or four people, three or four times a year. So that's that's how you that's how you are grandfathered in. But if you suddenly have a shooting range or I, 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 I'm not I'm not saying I'm saying some level of activity beyond what exists today will require a review of And hopefully we will have a codes enforcement officer in place to make that determination. Correct. Right. Right. When is this code uh, operation gonna this guy gonna be so put in? As soon as they approve the budget to give us the funds, call your county commissioners. Tell them to approve the funds. If they want, if they want. I'm looking at Anytime a business grows beyond its current capacity, that we need to come in. It's a business in an agricultural area, we have to come back. You just said business, I didn't. And looking at this, that, uh, that's actually a, a term that uh, sometimes gets, causes confusion. I, in speaking with Mr. Luna, I, I've asked him not to say business in relation to sheepdog. Because sometimes, it matter, sometimes people get confused on all the time, and that's why I told Ms. Wildman that the, that's the very reason why I do not look at the top. It doesn't matter if it's nonprofit. It doesn't matter if it's profit. 
it's got a revenue stream. Boom, it's a business. For our purposes, in my opinion, in construing our zoning, it's a business. I might have personal feelings about that business, about the 501c3 versus for profit, but our zoning resolution does not address that. Our zoning resolution addresses commercial. I have commercial right here in my hand. I have proof and documentation that there's been some sort of commercial nonprofit operating in this place since 2017, and that is the basis for my determination as far as grandfathering purposes. However, I do think that it is limited to what the use not. I'm reading right here from this Sheepdog website, and even though I know you're not affiliated with Sheepdog anymore, I imagine you providing us this means this is still your mission and goal. It's exactly the mission. Okay, and so I, I, for all intents and purposes, I was Sheepdog. I did all the work, I put 9% of the money in, and so this is what they're doing according to this. They're doing uh, hiking. Uh, da -da -da, they're ATVs are restricted on the property. There are four-wheeler parks in the area. This is a place where Alan Muffler is tearing up dirt. It's horse country. Don't have any current horses, but you can bring your owner. Let us know. We'll find you one. Um, so horseback riding, kayaking, canoeing. There are fishing holes. Lodging. Uh, sites for tents and RVs are already available. Cabins and cottages are not yet available. Um, the Cannon County, County location does not yet have a cabin, but they're in the fundraising phase. Cabins will be built based on demand for their use and availability of resources to do so. They won't be stacked on top of each other, even if 100% filled. Um, cabins are to be reserved by members, and those members will determine who all stays in the cabin with them, though all within all will be registered. Members can only reserve one cabin at a time. Central facilities will also be built as resources become available. This will be workshops and gardens, as well as the central hall overlooking the back. That's, that is the parameters of what he can do. He gave it to us. I think that it is fair to say that he doesn't need to turn this into Disney World and that there doesn't need to be a cabin every five feet away because that will substantially change the nature of his mission. But I don't think a board can sit here and tell him, you don't have four cabins or you got to go back. You don't have two and you got to go back. We just, I just don't see in our zoning rules where we have that power. The only power we have is to determine, is it a commercial use? If it is a non-conforming commercial use, then was he grandfathered in? And being grandfathered in is like being pregnant. You either already aren't. You're not kind of grandfathered in. You're not grandfathered in, in my opinion, you're not grandfathered in for a limited purpose. Now, he's grandfathered in for the purpose that we got here. If he puts an adult bookstore over there, he's got problems. If he puts a, a, a water park over there, he's got problems. If he puts anything outside of the purview of what his stated intent is that is provided to us, then he does need to come back before us, and he should be expected to come back before us. That is my, that is my opinion, because we're going to save these, we're going to put these in the minutes, and we're going we're to have uh, uh, good neighbors out of volunteer view that are going to be able to keep an eye if anything needs to be checked out that is outside of the parameters of what we've got here. Yes, ma'am. Since gunfire is not mentioned in that, if there is gunfire, he comes back before the board. You did not read gunfire on that. No, he, he can shoot on the property. Yeah. Yeah. There, there has to be a law about the guns. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And you're the neighbors shoot more guns than I do. Well, sure. we're not. We're not going to get. We're here. I'm going to go back and forth. I have a couple of questions. So, I have a question. So, is he allowed to only have like three or four people, three or four times a year? So, is that what you're saying or no? I'm confused about that. He's allowed to do what's on the special So, he's statement. allowed to build cabins back there without coming back? And my question too, I did have a question. She kind of addressed it. Okay, so he was a, was she dog, he was a non for profit. He was a Bible was right. So, since he dissolved that, and he changed it, the name is now for profit. Would he not have to come back and get like approval? No, I mean, because there's a 30 month rollover period in our zoning ordinance for non conforming use. There has to be a 30 month period in which he's not operational. Um, it's the use of the property and what the property is being used for. It's not. Okay. 
ownership does not matter. Ownership does not matter for purposes of zoning and use. Okay, so if he's building cabins and he's down for profit, what do you not have to be commercial though? He's already commercial. Nonprofit does not mean commercial means you you generate a revenue stream. A nonprofit generates a revenue stream just like any other business does. It's just that it's a nonprofit. So if all the money goes to benefit its members or to pay salaries for employees and things of that nature. That's what a nonprofit does. But it generates revenue just like a commercial business. That's why it's looked at the same. It, it for purposes of selling. Okay, so since, but since it's land No, because it's it's what he's been doing. It's been his intended use according to this. I don't and would you read to me what we define as agriculture? I don't think his facility would qualify as agricultural. It's not conforming I know, but what what can happen in a in a agriculture? The only thing you can build on agricultural is it's just that a, like your residential home. That's what I got. So if he's just building his single residential home, okay, so he's done that, so that's all he can build back. I, I think I think more more construction would need a special exception. But that's what I was thinking. No, I just I just was just wondering. Also, it doesn't say anything about shooting. You as the landowner, you can shoot all you want. But when you have guests on your property that's part of your business, you do not say that you hunt, you do not say that you so to me Well he can. I mean he can he can, but not his business says nothing about firearms, correct? But it doesn't matter for our purposes. No, what I'm saying, if he, he's grandfathered into what, there was a question asked here, which I think we deserve an answer. It doesn't say anything about allowing shooting and hunting or anything on the property, correct? What, what you read in that, in that um, his, his charter or whatever that was, it doesn't say anything about, what, about I'm just not saying you know, that hunting or gunfire in the charter. Right. So what, I, what I'm saying is that if that becomes part, that, that can't become part until you bring it back. Yeah, that's, that's branding. That, well, and that's a different purpose. You're going to lose that. You're going to lose that. You're going to lose that. Because it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a recreational, outdoor recreation. It's a retreat. Even you cannot use that document there to say that, that you can do everything. That's fine, but, but a, chancery, a chancery court will. A chancery. We're not a chancery court. You're we right. might lose a chancery You're court. You're right. We're, we're the first line. That's right. We are. We've got to try to determine what a chancery court would decide so that we can make the right decision here. And Some, you know, sometimes you... It's some, not illegal to fire a gun on property. There's nothing in the zoning ordinance that addresses any of that. There's nothing you else. cannot use that document to say that you use that document to say that that's the parameters of what you can do. I'm not it abusing this document. This no. You just told you just told all of us and these people here mm -hmm. that that what he had there is the parameters of what he can do. Right. If he fires a gun, how are we going to stop him? I don't think she's uh, saying if he fires a gun. I think she's saying if guests fire a gun. I'm I'm just saying that that. If you Cannot set out the parameters by what he's got. I'm not setting they, any parameters. They asked. I'm saying this is what his description of it that is operating. And you said as long as he does that, and so warning, okay. his grandfather did. Well, I will retract that statement then as well, and I apologize. What I am saying is that he's laid out his parameters. He should operate within those parameters, and anything he wants to do to ramp up his operations needs to come back before the board. But I would, I would also. Add on to that, Nathan. You know, it, it doesn't say anything about gardening in there. But if he wanted to start a garden, it's within. It, it's it's the same vein as what he's doing here. That's why That's I don't think wild. that that hunting would be. I think that would be totally fine. Now, if there's a target range and a shooting range there, I think that that's outside of. The that's a different animal, I would say. Right. If if somebody's having target practice back there with, you know, all the setup and shooting at a target back there and all that, that's. To me, that's outside of this. Absolutely. But, but hunting is not, or or um, target shooting is not. And I, I, I think it would all be fine, to be honest with you. Uh, and again, the codes enforcement officer would help a whole lot because he can he can respond to individual mm -hmm. complaints. This is the exact. You know, it takes us a month. 
to get together. Absolutely. And, I agree. I agree. And so, so can I interject here? If I have guests that want to go target, want to go shooting, shooting, I'll take my go, Casey. Corral. I cannot replicate their facilities for the amount of money that we take. It's much easier for me to just drive across the county to them, take my guests to their shoot house. A number of my guests are in police officers. They're gonna they're gonna have their weapons with them. And I'm not gonna try to restrict that. Um, because they will feel as naked without their firearm as we would without our clothes. Just just simply based on the case law that I know surrounding this issue. I mean, it says outdoor recreation right there. I think as long as he stays in that vein, I think he's right. going to be okay as far as being grandfathered in now. It's, like it's, it's fact it. intensive too. I mean, it's what, no. It, they, they start building. He's already. You got a house, home on there, correct? I've got an RV up. So you don't have a brick and mortar. No. no permanent structures on the field. So I think I any more than I think he uh -huh. could build one cabin. And still, and still be, because that's a single family residential. You build more than that, then you need a special exception for us. So you've got your parameters as well, sir. I mean, when it comes to construction. That's why, that's why I'm standing up here at the podium, is, is to find out what it is, what is that level, the, the current board. More than one, more than one, right here, more than one. Is at, is at ramping up operations. Does everybody, is, does everybody on the board agree that more than one, Single family residents would be ramping up for purposes of requiring a special exception. Can I ask one more question, too? So, if he does have a single family residence, but he has slots for his ten tent stuff there. That's not part of the structure. It's right. not part of the structure. But what if he links them up for like all year round and stuff? It's not yeah, part of the structure. That was just my question. But You're, I, I can tell you what is, though a, a, a foundation, permanent foundation. And one more question, too. It, so is he allowed to have, y'all said, because I just want to know specifics, I guess because I've been so sure. confused with the back and forth. So is he allowed to have more than three people, three or four people, more than three or four times a year? I would say the frequency does not matter. I would say what does matter, though, is the size. I would say if it gets well, no, much no. larger than that. And again. Because is he allowed to have groups of three people every week? Because the way y'all talk to, that's ramping up people is more than three people, you know? If you as a citizen start seeing crowds out there, you need to know that. Okay. Well, yes, that was Hopefully, my question. again, the, the enforcement um, officer. So, lift the camera. Okay. That's what I, I, know. I was confused on that. It's, it's bought with the house. I just got to put it up. Because the way I understood it, y'all had said he was not allowed to have more than groups of three or four people more than three or four times a year because it's all he had had and that's all that was grandfathered. Well, I think I was, I was corrected. So. Okay. I just wanted to be for sure on that. The reason he's, the, the basis for his being grandfathered in is he had a low impact usage of a few people a few times. Okay? If you guys decide it's too many people and too often, you need to file a complaint and we'll deal with it once you make file that. That's correct. That's exactly right. Okay, that's what I was saying. I just wanted to get Yeah, yeah. The, the goal is to have a mechanism for y'all to do a complaint with the code and Officer, so we don't have to be here like this every time. Yeah, I was just curious for that. Sir. One question. And I understand him, you know, he's saying a lot of police officers would be up there mm -hmm. and bringing their own weapons. Well, if you're going to have pe people with PTSD up there, uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't address that. We can't address It's just not. It's, 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 it's what it's, triggers it, though. That's done so. That, and, and, and that may be, but. It's beyond the scope of our. It's beyond the scope of our review. I mean, it's just, we just our zoning ordinance doesn't have any mandate in there to take those things into consideration. It's it's. Does it take into consideration the tax exempt status? No, no, it doesn't matter. Who do we need to follow? I, I, would, I would say this, man. Who do I need to follow with? If you if you're looking for recourse against Mr. Taylor, it would be a civil suit. In Chancery okay. Court here, would okay. you let him you, you, can, you can file a class action suit with your. With okay. your homeowners association or your citizens. Tell me if I'm wrong. That's Maybe. private. If, if you want any, you know, if, okay. if, if you want any relief under our zoning ordinance, the zoning ordinance allows you to file a private cause of action. Okay. If you wanted to, to speak with an attorney, obviously not me, somebody else that I don't know. Um, and you can, you have private recourse on that. Okay. You got 
guys do. I would say though, you you know, you'd have to show proof that Mr. Davis was being a bad neighbor and causing, you know, some sort of damages to your area. So. Grandfather, the case law on grandfathering is the, the case law on grandfathering it's it's a little all over the place, but it's it, it, it's zoning ordinances restrict a person's use on their on their own property. Therefore, zoning ordinances are strictly construed in favor of the property owner. If there is any ambiguity or if there is any conflict, that's just how it is. If there is any sort of ambiguity or conflict, the court is going to construe it in favor of the owner of the property in which the ordinance is trying to restrict. That's in every zoning case you read in the state of Tennessee. That is that is like the baseline standard. Um, so it is. It, it's but. But of course, you have recourse, and um, if you guys, if you or your neighbors wanted to obtain private counsel, you guys are more than welcome to do that. We'll have minutes available for your counsel, uh, and there will be a recording as well. We wish to read these recording this that you can read your counsel to review as well. So, my next question is going to be since I do not step foot on that property whatsoever, um, who's going to monitor how many facilities have been built? That's the code's compliance officer that monitors. And we don't have one, right? We're, no, we do. Well, we do. We, we do, do, but he's not allowed to be in this, so right? He's a, no. Well, no, he's not. He's not. That's true. So, so who, call me. So who do I go to? I go to you. Okay. That's what I need to know. So we get the code's compliance officer. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, it's no, me. not your fault. You're right. You're exactly No, no, you're right. I mean, there I have. Big recourse for I mean, exactly. And that's why we're working on it. Right. Yeah. And. All I would like to say to you all and to Mr. Taylor is thank you for y'all's patience. Um, and for being civil. Thank and for being civil. Thank y'all for that. Um, we're new at this. So we're, we're trying to figure out our procedures as we go and figure out things as we go. And so for any, I'll take responsibility for any procedural issues and for any delays and having a part on this. So we have to take a vote. Yes. Uh, I will, make motion. I'm going to make a motion that the board make a finding that the property owned by Mr. Taylor at 101 Cimmerillion Drive is a non-conforming commercial property in an A1 agricultural zone that is grandfathered in due to being operational on a basic level through evidence of revenue from nonprofit uh, tax returns, statements of Mr. Taylor, that it is grandfathered in because it was operational prior to our zoning ordinance being passed on August 16, 2018. I'll second that motion. There's a second by Mr. Brandon. If, is there any further discussion? I think the discussion needs to include what Tommy Lee said, I mean, the motion needs to include what Tommy Lee said when it gets to X level, that it needs to come back. Can you add? To sure, that? and and I feel like that Mr. Taylor would be allowed to build one single family residence uh, as permitted use with accessory structures. I mean, that's permitted with, it, with our zoning ordinance. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll add the amendment to my motion that there are currently no, you know, I think we've made a finding that there are no structures right now located at this property. There are structures on the property, there's not residential. No, there's not residential structures on the property. So, uh, of course, within our zoning ordinance, Mr. Taylor is more than allowed to build one single family residence on that property without coming to this board. However, um, any additional uh, buildings, residences that are not accessory structures uh, would be an escalation of operational activities grandfathered in and Mr. Taylor would need to uh, come before this board to apply for a special exception if needed. And with that amended motion made, do I hear a second on the amended motion? I second the amended motion. Mr. Brandon has seconded the amended motion. Is there any further discussion on the amended motion? Being none. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion right. carries.
cares. Thank you all for coming. Volunteer view citizens, Mr. Fayette, thank you.
have placed on there for everyone to get their calendars to have a workshop in July to discuss building permit checklists and amendments to the proposed R zoning ordinance. If, okay. if, uh, if that's agreeable to the other board members, I would like to hold off on that until we have like